Hi, you guys. Good morning. Um, I woke up today with something on my mind that I wanted to talk to y'all about. Um, I decided that for my, like, more serious videos, I'm just going to do it off camera. Because I feel like when I'm on camera, I'm always, like, joking around and making jokes and stuff. And, uh, plus I haven't even gotten out of bed yet. Like, yes, it's almost noon. Okay, I have my own schedule. Anyway, um, I wanted to talk to you guys about spiritual predators. Um, as spirituality becomes more and more popular, I feel like this is going to be a very big issue over the next 10 years at least. Um... And this video is for anyone, but especially those new on their spiritual path. And also, especially if you're female, like ages 18 to 24. Because I've noticed that um, that's most commonly when a lot of women are taken advantage of by these types of people. Um... Just because your prefrontal cortex and your frontal lobe and everything is not done developing. So you are a lot more impressionable. Um, that's the age that I went through this. Um, I was almost... I was almost 25, I think. Like, I was 24 and a half or so when all this ended. And I was about 21 when it started. So, um, I have met a few of these types of people. Each of them had textbook traits of NPD, of narcissism. And I'm not talking about one or two traits and one or two behaviors every now and then. No, I'm talking about when I read up on NPD, I thought that the diagnosis was handwritten for them. It was so, like, eerie how spot on it was. Um, these people can be male or female. I've met both. Um, I think that the most common setting for this to occur is going to be um, an impressionable female and a very predatory male, but... It can be female as well. Um, probably when I look back and when I first met these people, the biggest red flag that I should have noticed was they were always puffing their chest out, always looking for war, always shit talking online, always in fights online, always threatening people with brujeria and witchcraft. Um, all, like, these are the type of people that will start war, spiritual war, over nothing. Because their feelings got hurt. That's all. You can say the wrong thing. And they just, I mean, they're possessed. A lot of narcissists are possessed. And I don't say that lightly. Um, this type of person typically has a lot of spiritual attachments. As a clairvoyant and a medium and a yaya, I can tell you these people have serious spiritual attachments. Um, the energy that they allow to overtake them is not an energy that just wants to make you upset once or twice or inflict physical harm or anything like that this energy wants to destroy souls okay <clears throat> and you guys are noticing as my throat is crackling like that yeah i'm gonna say it anyway because fuck this um this energy wants to destroy souls they want to destroy human beings and break their spirit. Um, and what better avenue to do that than spirituality, right? 
um, they will just be very domineering, very controlling, very, um, just narcissistic when it comes to their spirituality. Um, they think that they can do whatever they want. These are the people that think that karma does not exist, which is very ironic, but I think that that is ultimately a trick from the divine. Um, because the universe is so much bigger than them. Um, but that is how they carry themselves. Um, they, because of the entities that they're possessed by, it's very easy for them to become obsessed with spirituality. Um, they become very power hungry. These are the people that spend all day, every day, in front of altars, shrines, pots, orishas, whatever they have. Like, it consumes them. Completely. Um, which is not normal. If you see someone like this, then it's always over some pots for like months and months and months and months. No. Even if it's their job, meaning they're like me and they're a spiritualist, they should still take days off, you know. I love my spirituality, I love my spirits, but I'm doing other things. I'm cooking, I'm cleaning, I'm doing my hair, I'm doing my makeup, I'm, you know, going out with friends, I'm making jewelry, I'm like, doing yoga, <laughs> you know? This is not my entire life. But because of the entity that this type of person is possessed by, they just become enmeshed in their spirituality. They have no life outside of it. Um, so let's see the signs that we have so far is the aggression and the obsession, okay? Um, another sign is typically these people will have an affinity towards like the darker arts more than usual, more than is normal. Um, don't get me wrong, I have no problem going to the dark side, I naturally carry a lot of Hecate energy. So I'm not saying darkness is bad by any means, but I can jump back and forth, you know? I know how to keep my life balanced. Um, a lot of these people that I've met at least have a past or even a current path in Satanism Luciferianism, um, that whole nature of spirituality. And a lot of Satanists and Luciferians do things like, um, they'll try to do destiny swaps, they'll try to do karma swaps where they, um, basically offload or try to offload their bad karma their sins, their misfortune onto another person and then take that person's good luck and good fortune and good karma. Obviously, like I said earlier, the universe is a lot bigger than these people. So even if they're successful, it can only go so far for so long um, because there is a natural and much bigger order to things, right? But they prey on vulnerable people, typically empaths, with strong spiritual gifts, strong ancestors, strong spiritual courts. Um, I was like a perfect storm because... I had all of that, right? And 
my dad had passed. Like when I first met um, one of these people, my dad had just passed a year prior and I was raised by my dad and I was very close with him. So I had to move out by myself and I was just figuring out how to be an adult. Um, I was very, very vulnerable. And unfortunately, that opened me up. And I was going to this person for readings. So they were able to see my ancestors, my spiritual court, all of that. Um, and they did a lot of, like, vampirism. They did a lot of... Um, parasitic things yeah and this is not just one person I'm talking about I have come across this many times it's just now I can smell it a mile away and so can my spirits because these people have tried to come for me so bad and people that I know that were also involved with these people, that we had no choice but to lean on ourselves and our spirit guides, right? So over time, it just became a thing where I can recognize it very quickly. But I don't want you guys to go through this crap um, if you can avoid it, you know? Um, but yeah, typically they're very, very attracted to demons, goetic spirits, Lucifer. They will, um, like, offer rituals and things, ceremonies to the public for soul contracts to sell their soul to entities like Lucifer. <sighs> if someone even says that they have anything to do with that crap, girl, leave. That is like, number one, it's unnecessary. It's very insecure. How, like, that's what tickles me about this type of person. Y'all will see what I'm talking about. They, they think that they're so powerful and it's like, if you're so powerful, why do you have to sell the one thing that lifetime after lifetime after lifetime makes you who you are? Because at the end of the day, your soul is all you got, okay? This body can die, it can rot away, you can perish, but hopefully you still have a soul, right? It's like, if you're so powerful, why do you have to sell your soul? Um, typically they have, like, they're just way too into the dark side of things and not balanced. Like, I've been dedicated to Hecate for years, um, energies like Mama Mujit. Mama Mujit holds a very special place in my heart. Um, she's done a lot for me when I asked her. She's considered a dark goddess. Um, Cynthia and Pablo is very special to me as well. And I love them, right? I love the dark feminine. I can sit comfortably in that energy, but I also love my spirits of light, you know, I'm balanced. And I think that one reason I became that way is because I saw what happened to people when they were not. And I don't want to be that way. And I don't want you guys to be that way either. Um, let's see. I know I'm kind of like going off on mini tangents just because I have been through this so thoroughly and I'm trying to give you guys as much data as I can. 
um, because they all have a very similar approach to spirituality. They all have a similar energy because they're fucking possessed. And they allow themselves to be so. They're very predatory. They, um, if you try to, to leave or if you do leave, they cannot handle it. Um, in the times that I've met these people, when it was all over, I, it was over because I decided to leave. Um, the time, the different times that I went through this, they would always start a smear campaign. They would always send their flying monkeys, sending spies to me to get readings. Um, and doing a bunch of other shit. Trying to accuse me of things I never did. Just a bunch of extra bullshit. Again, narcissistic behavior. Flying monkeys, they're little minions. Because they love being a leader of some sort. They love having control. Um, thankfully, I have good godparents and... My godparents are a good example in the community. They are upstanding members of the community. So I'm kind of on the flip side of all this. Where I can see what a healthy teacher looks like. But I don't think that I would appreciate it as much as I do. If I had not gone through this bullshit. Right? Because I know what it looks like when someone's trying to take advantage of you. I know what it's like when someone's trying to do destiny swaps with you. That's a whole separate video, by the way. Um, these people, they have a very entitled mindset, if you notice. That's another red flag that you'll see. Um, they will want to take the good from other people and then offload their bullshit, their misfortune, their bad karma onto others. Um, I've seen it. So if they ever talk about that towards you, I would not have anything to do with them. Because that's just asking for trouble. Um, if you ever find yourself in that situation, your best bet is to get an elder. But... The thing about, like, destiny swaps and stuff is as fascinating as these people are with it, because they're actually very deeply insecure. Narcissists, the root of their bullshit is insecurity. Um, they're always trying to be someone other than themselves. Whereas a normal human being is like, you know what? I might have been dealt some shitty cards, but I trust God, and I know that the plan that God and the universe and creation, the plan that they have for me was made for me to fit my lifestyle and my purpose and my destiny. I don't want someone else's. They have no concept of that. They feel so entitled because they're trying to fill that void within them. That's another reason they're so vampiric and parasitic is because they're trying to fill that void. They have no sense of self. Um, you'll notice that they... They have no core sense of self they're always trying to change their personality they're always trying to um create a new identity for themselves that's why a lot of these people are the ones that have been initiated in like 18 different spiritual paths and are a master and are proficient in none of them 
Because that's what the narcissist does. They go to a spiritual path, try it for a little while. It's not giving them the fame, fortune, clout, glamour, success, etc. that they want. So they go to a different one. And before you know it, they've got like 20 titles behind their name. I, I don't suggest getting involved with those people. Um, it's normal to be called to and active in multiple traditions. But I, I, when we're talking about like five or more, I think that's getting a little excessive. You know, that's just my opinion. But they're searching for something outside of themselves to fill that void that's within them. And there's nothing wrong with, you know, learning a lot and studying different traditions. But it's like when you're mixing stuff and you're, you know, like, I'm trying to think of an example. Um, hmm. Okay. Let's do Epiritismo. Okay. I'm not going to mix Spiritism and Pablo at all. Because it's different dimensions, it's different levels of spirits, it's different methods of doing things, you know, um, but these people have no concept of tradition, they have no concept of there's a certain way that things are supposed to be done within reason, you know, like, they just mix everything, that's another red flag. They heavily go against the tradition that they're practicing and think that it's okay. Um, they're very quick to break taboos because they think that they're above it all. Um, another thing that I've seen is typically they do a lot of animal sacrifice. And I'm not talking about I mean, I don't like it at all, but I understand in certain ATRs and certain houses and stuff, it's required or it's expected, okay? I'm talking about the ones that overdo it. Like, if you go to their page, they are constantly posting about it. And over the years, they lose that respect for life. That's why a lot of them will threaten you with violence or spiritual harm very quickly because they've become desensitized to life. That's another red flag. Um, over the years, the amount that they sacrifice and the level of animals that they sacrifice gets worse. They might have started off with like chickens. Now they've moved on to cats and dogs. That is just despicable to me. Um, I wouldn't, trust me, Lou, there's plenty of other spiritual teachers that you can find that don't sacrifice cats and dogs. Please find one. I wish I was being dramatic. I wish I was making all this bullshit up, but unfortunately I am not. And I'm so goddamn tired of seeing it. And I'm tired of women falling victim to it. Because at the end of the day, spirituality is just another avenue that a lot of men have found to manipulate women. They get into this for power over other people. Not for power over their own life. So, I'm 
know that was a pretty heavy list. Um, I've seen the worst of it. And I see it happening more and more because I don't think that um, it's going away anytime soon. But anyone that's violent or threatens violence, anyone that threatens you with witchcraft when you haven't really done anything to them, anyone that is just obsessed with the darkness and obsessed with their spirituality, please, please, like, don't even go near them, okay? Because they're very vampiric, they're energy vampires, they will try to take from you. Um, they're just not good people to be around, okay? And these people are nothing if they do not lose their supply. I'm sorry, these people are nothing if they do not have supply. Um, if you find yourself in this situation, I'm telling you, these people, if you leave them, they cannot take it, they cannot stand it, they will try to make your life miserable. Leave anyway. I don't care how many titles people have, for some reason a lot of people think that the more titles they get, the more shit that they can get away with. That's not the case. Don't let them scare you, okay? Um, leave anyway. If you would like to book a reading, you can click the link in my description. I also sell spiritual baths, oils, jewelry, waist beads, etc. And I will talk to you guys next time. I know this was a heavy video, but I've seen this a lot the last few years and I just, I'm tired of women going through it.